Did you see that? Let's take a closer and slower look. That is the International Space Station zooming across the sun. Here is a real-time, unedited look at the video. It takes the ISS about two and a half seconds to transit the sun. Stay tuned and I'll tell you about the equipment and software I used to get this incredible shot. It is not a once in a lifetime shot, so if that's something that you want to do, you can definitely do it. But one thing to know is that NASA plans to decommission the ISS around 2031. So you have a lot of time, but you don't have all the time in the world. To catch the ISS transiting the sun, you need three things to cooperate. First is the sun. Sure, it's an obvious thing, but I feel like I should mention it anyway because the sun is a very important piece of this. The second thing that needs to cooperate are clouds. If you've ever tried taking a picture of anything in the sky, you'll know that clouds will do anything they can to get in the way. So no cloud coverage is ideal, or at least less clouds where the sun is. And the third and the most important thing is the ISS needs to be in a very precise location. The ISS goes around the planet every 90 minutes. So that sounds like there should be plenty of opportunities to catch the ISS transiting the sun, but the sun's apparent size in the sky is very small. It's only half a degree, the same size as the moon. And the ISS all the way up there in space looks extremely tiny. So it's matching one tiny thing with another tiny thing. And the orbit of the ISS fluctuates every single day. It doesn't go over the same point every single day. So you need to be able to calculate it. And thanks to technology and math and science, we can actually predict where the sun will be and where the ISS will be. And we can use those calculations to figure out where they will cross paths. Same goes for the moon and the ISS and pretty much any other satellite in space. And to help with that, we'll look at a wonderful website called Transit Finder. So we'll look at that after we go over the equipment I used to capture this shot. So for the shot, I used my Lund 40 Hydrogen Alpha Telescope. The ISS looks very tiny in this because it is a very small telescope. It has a 40 millimeter aperture with 400 millimeter focal length, which makes it an F10 telescope. It's amazing for fitting the sun into its field of view, but it's terrible for looking at anything small like the ISS. The next equipment I used is my Skywatcher Solar Quest Altas mount. So this is something that I purchased recently and this made my setup time to be less than five minutes. For the video, I used my ZWASI asi 120 mm mini guide cam. So the sun wasn't totally in my field of view, but I was able to process the full disk into being in post-processing. For the software, I used Fire Capture in .ser format. My gain was set to zero. My exposure was set to 3.3 milliseconds. I averaged around 14 frames per second during the recording, and I did not use any kind of gamma. To plan this out, I used a website called transit-finder.com, and it helped me learn when the ISS will transit over me. You can let the website detect your location or you can open the map and select your location. It opens at latitude and longitude zero. So I'm going to zoom out and scroll over to near Boston and find my local park where I know I'll have a view of the Western sky. I then put the dates in, travel distance is set as default 80. I didn't change that and I clicked on calculate. And lucky me, the ISS is to transit on August 6th and it looks like it'll be really close to the center and it'll happen at 6.38 PM. When we see the map, we can see the full path as well as where I will be and where the center of the path will be. Next up, I use the Sun Surveyor app. It's, there's a free version of this app, but I've been using the paid version for a while and I love it. So when I open up the app, in the map view of the Sun Surveyor app, I zoom into the park location where I know I'll be going and then I click on the menu and switch to street view. And it shows me the sun's path on the horizon and it looks pretty perfect. So I fast forward in the timeline and I can see where the sun will be at around the time of transit. So I'm all planned and I head to the park, set up my gear and I wait for 6.38 p.m. Standing outside in the sun, I stared at my laptop and 6.38 p.m. comes and goes and I didn't see anything. It was really, really bright outside, so I think I just missed it. So I ran home, I played the video, and there it was at exactly 6.38 p.m. something seconds. I saw this little tiny thing just zoom across the sun. I was really excited and I wanted to process the video as soon as possible, but then I remembered I have a three month old that requires a lot of attention. So that I had to put that in the back burner and it took me a few more weeks to actually process uh, all the frames. I've tried to get the ISS transiting the sun for many years now using my bigger telescope and a white light filter, but one thing or another doesn't align. It's usually clouds or my time or the ISS is gonna transit the sun 
too far out and I just can't travel to it. But I'm happy that I was finally able to get this shot and that I'm able to share it with you. You can also use the Transit Finder website to also track transits of the Hubble Space Telescope and the Chinese satellite Tiangong. And you can do this for both the sun and the moon. And the Sun Surveyor app will help you plan your shots with the moon and the sun so you can figure out where you need to be at the specific time of transit so that you're ready to take that shot. If you get to see a transit, take the opportunity. It's really incredible. And if you're trying to view a transit that involves the sun, make sure you practice safe solar viewing and use the proper filters to both protect your eyes and your gear. If you need a white light filter, check out my video where I show you how to create a white light filter cap for a telescope for around $12. If you found this video helpful, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't yet. And I'm planning on live streaming the annual eclipse on October 14th. It'll be a partial eclipse from where I am because I won't be traveling for it. And it'll be a practice for the total solar eclipse on April 8, 2024, where I will be traveling to Texas and I'm hoping to do a multi-screen live stream if, if everything works out. So wish me luck. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you in another video. Until next time, clear skies.